hey good morning good uh, hey good day team uh, so welcome back and uh, welcome back to the day three uh, technical discussion on uh, EAZ 700 uh, so we were facing some technical challenges on the back end and uh, so we were not able to upload the presentation and few participants are not able to join uh, that the reason uh, there was a delay in the starting the session uh, so good morning once again everyone and welcome back to uh, AZ 700 exam so last two days uh, we were discussing more about uh, networking aspects like uh, we started with uh, uh, understanding the concept of uh, AZ 700 program uh, then we had a detailed discussion on the training part uh, then we had a discussion on uh, uh, network uh, options yesterday we have configured uh, vnet and uh, we have seen like how ip address has been assigned to client computers so this was a discussion and this was the uh, debate or the uh, discussion was happening around uh, uh, during the sessions now if you have any question related to day one or a day two uh, you can post it on the chat window So right now we have we understood the concept of a VNet, uh, we understood the concept of a subnet, and yesterday we have configured uh, uh, VNet also. And uh, last yesterday and day before yesterday we were discussing about the network capabilities. So I'm just uh, recapping whatever things we have discussed yesterday. So we started with a case study, two case studies we have discussed, like uh, how we are migrating from on premises to Azure Cloud. And what are the challenges we are going to face? And we discuss uh, what are the different offerings we have from the Microsoft. We understood almost a 15 plus networking service Microsoft is giving. So it's include virtual network and it's include the traffic manager and it's include the network gateway or a load balancer. So all these offering it's been uh, given from Microsoft. And we had a discussion on what is the need of a virtual networking also like where you want to go for a virtual networking so we understood like it's basically using for a data exchange and uh, we understood like this can be used for communicating all the resources which has been hosted on the microsoft side and the same time we are getting a permission for connecting or uh, this one to uh, on premises uh, uh, data center also in case uh, if you're not migrated this from uh, Microsoft or from the existing on-premises that or uh, data room or a data center, we have an option for migrating to uh, Microsoft side also. So, so we, we have the option to connect hybrid and uh, on-premises data center. So that's basically known as hybrid virtual network. So we'll be see, uh, we'll be discussing that how uh, connection can be uh, done on the Microsoft side. Then we we have seen like a top view of how virtual network is in can be configured. Like we we understood like we have a Virtual network has been configured like this, and uh, so you have uh, uh, DNS is in place, and you have NSG is in place, and you have uh, Azure load balancers are available in the uh, uh, picture, and you have a management subnet, or you have an Active Directory. So all this information you can able to see on the um, Azure Virtual Network. So this is the way it's been configured. Now, when it is coming to Azure Virtual Network. Uh, so we understood like whenever we are configuring a VM or a virtual machine, by default there is a network interface card is been assigned. Uh, so this similar like your, how you are working on an on-premises. Like if you want to configure any uh, on-premises workstation or a server, it's mandatory that you need a network interface card. So similar way, uh, when it is coming to the Microsoft Azure side also, uh, all the VMs or all the resources been getting a VNIC uh, that's called a virtual network interface. Uh, so by default only one network interface card only it's been configured for a vm so this uh, only one network interface card only it's been assigned for a vm 
So this NIC can be assigned with the two address. One is a public IP address and another one is a private IP address. So public IP address is basically using for connecting to external and the private IP address is the internal IP address. The IP address which is not routable on the internet that is a private IP address. So yesterday we have seen like what are the IP address can be configured as a private IP address and how public IP address has been associating and how public IP address has been given to you. So that part is being uh, yesterday we have seen. Then we had a discussion on uh, um, how virtual network has been uh, created. Uh, so during that, we understood what is the need of Azure virtual networking, and we have seen like how this is, can be communicating also. And we have seen like basically this been configured or it's been uh, given in the format of CADR block. CADR block is nothing; it's in a decimal format. Generally, we are assigning. Then we understood yesterday. So if you are configuring a VM. So by default, there is a two IP address which has been assigned. One is a private IP address and another one is a public IP address. So this public IP address is by default, it's been a uh, pricing is that. So you need to check the price part when it is coming to, uh, when you are configuring for a, any kind of a public IP address. So you need to ensure that pricing is been involved for public IP address. So the cost management has to be taken care from your side. Now, other point you need to remember. So the pu public IP address, it's been assigned automatically. It's in a dynamic mode. It's been configured, but there are some situation like it's your way of say it's been configuring or you you are looking for a reserved or it's been a static IP. Uh, then that kind of a situation while deleting or while assigning this one, you either you can configure it as a static. Otherwise, it will be using the dynamic IP address. So dynamic IP address case like in case if you're configuring website, uh, the IP address will be got changed and that will make a problem. So in to ensure that you're assigning static IP address. So that's the one important point you need to remember. So this is about the Azure virtual network. Now coming to uh, network networking capabilities. So, so networking capabilities basically it's been uh, um, using like what are the features generally we are getting on the Microsoft side. So that network capabilities has been, uh, we already have a discussion like it's been using for isolation and uh, segmentation. Then we had a discussion on the internet connection. So this point already we have discussed day one and day two. So I'm just skipping this uh, slides. So because it's already we had a discussion and uh, yesterday we are discussing also. So yesterday we started from our network interface. So network interface, it's been, uh, So yesterday we understood a uh, discussion. It's about uh, network interface. That's the first topic we are uh, discussing. So, so when you are configuring a Azure Net Azure VM, by default there is a virtual network interface has been assigned. So by default only one network interface only has been assigned. And if you want, uh, if you can add one more in network interface or up to 256, you'll be able to add. So yesterday we are seeing this lab. So this is the one lab procedure has been given to you. So I uh, asked everyone to complete this lab yesterday. So I hope everyone has completed this lab. So we need to create a two VM. We need to ensure that there is additional network interface card. It's been configured to your VM. So this is a lab procedure or the lab questions are given yesterday. So while creating this one, we need to ensure that there is a two subnet has been created also. So this is the lab yesterday we have done. Now, when you're assigning a IP address part. So IP addressing is the one topic we are seeing. So when you're configuring Azure VM, there is an internal IP address is by default, it's been assigned to your VM or a resource, which is part of a VNet. So yesterday we have seen this internal IP address we are getting from the VNet port. So this is the VNet has been created because when you're creating a VNet, there is an IP range you are defining like a slash 16, 
or you're defining like a start line slash 16 so this bnet range is been uh, you're uh, defining or you're configuring on in the microsoft side so so this is the way uh, ip address is being configured so you have a uh, bnet has been range has been uh, uh, configured so so VNet has been connected and from the pool only the IP address has been assigned to uh, virtual machine. And uh, we have IP address has been uh, um, assigned, it's been a top, um, typically the private IP address is generally it's been assigned to your VNet or if you have on-premises network or you have VPN gateway, your express route, all these situations will be using a private IP address. A public IP address we have seen yesterday like in which situation uh, you are going to use a public IP address so typically this will be used like if you have any internet based or internet phased resources uh, like a firewall or a bastion service or you have a load balancers or you have some VM which you need internet connections uh, that kind of a situation you will be using a public IP address. so that kind of a situation so we'll be using a public IP address. so typically you will be using for uh, communicating with the internet uh, which include the internet uh, or Azure public face services also. And uh, IP address has been never managed within a virtual machine. This has been the important point. This has been more managed in the Azure level, not managed in the uh, VM level. This has been managed in the Azure level. So that's an important point you need to remember. So private IP address generally will be using for VNet or on-premises network or a VPN gateway or express route. All these situations will be using this uh, uh, private IP address and public IP address in the internet phase or cases we are using. So the public IP address, this is the uh, next option uh, we have discussed yesterday. So when you are creating a public IP address like one along with the VM, your public IP address has been automatically creating. Now in case if you are have, uh, you have any kind of a network network security to be taken care of from your organization or if you want to do any kind of a cost management, uh, that kind of a situation you can able to disassociate your public IP address also from the uh, Microsoft uh, uh, Azure portal. So you have option for removing the public IP address also. So that's an important point you need to uh, So that's an important point you need to remember. So when it is coming to this, uh, when it is coming to this uh, creation of a public IP address, so it's basically uh, there are two options you have. One it's been like uh, you can configure in a basic mode, and another one it can be configured in a standard mode also. So you can able to use any of this model. Uh, so you can able to go for uh, um, basic mode, or you can go for uh, uh, SQO mode also. So we had a discussion on. Uh, what is the difference between the basic mode and what is the difference between a, a standard mode also so basically the two stock keeping unit and based on like uh, uh, what are the features is generally getting so based on that you will be able to use so basically we'll be using the production scenarios uh, we'll be using a standard sq that is a uh, normally by default uh, your public ip address has been configured in a standard sq mode only so but in case if you want to go back to old and uh, if you want to uh, support the old more kind of a model then you can go for the basic sq so standard sq is the option generally by default it's been available here and by default the routing uh, network option is been available it's the microsoft network and if you want to have any other network network uh, interface mechanism it is available in network then you can go for this one now ip address is uh, these are the IP address which you are not able to use in internet. Uh, so this is the IP address generally uh, we cannot use on the internet. This is called generally known as a private IP address. So you have a multicast IP address, you have broadcast, and you have a loopback IP address, and you have a link local also. This is the, another topic we have seen yesterday. So like 169.254.x.x, that's called a PIPA address or a link local address. This IP address also you will not be able to uh, use it in the uh, internet. So this is the another point we have discussed. So yesterday we had a discussion on uh, 
uh, uh, what is the difference or in which scenario you'll be able to use a static IP address and in which scenario you can go for a dynamic IP address. So this is the two points uh, we are discussed yesterday. So static IP address and a dynamic, how this can be assigned. Uh, so we understood like in the network connection properties, you have a flexibility or you have an option for removing this. one. So this is the two point uh, we are discussed. So that's about the uh, IP address part. So this is another lab uh, you can practice. It's been like uh, creating a public IP address. So this is the one lab you can uh, uh, do it today. So you can just note out this is a lab number four. Uh, lab number four, create a public IP address. Create and just pasting the lab question in the chat window. Create a public IP address and uh, delete also. So this is the lab four you need to complete. So lab three, one, two, three, I've already given. So this lab four you can complete today. So associating a public IP address, this is a lab five. So lab five is like a create a uh, public IP address and associate, associate and disassociate also. So practice these two lab. Perfect. Associate and dissociate publicate. So these are two that you need to complete. Then yeah. Now this next topic is about the subnet part. So yesterday we have seen when you are creating a public IP address, when you are creating a virtual network, uh, we are assigning a pool of IP address on the creation side. Like you're designing like a 10 dot zero dot zero dot slash sixty. And we understood like this has been giving around 65,536 IP address to your network. So if you're going back to your portal, I'm just taking you back, I'm taking you to Microsoft portal. Let me log in, just give me a second. I'm just connecting to Microsoft portal, just give me a second. It's asking the username and password and let's give me a second. Give me a second, just give me wrong ID.
so right now we are connected to Microsoft portal now yesterday you may be noticed while creating a virtual network or while defining a virtual network you may be seen when you are creating IP address like 10.0.0.16 .0 .0 .0 uh, you may be notice it's giving, getting an IP address of 65,536 IP address so this is the IP address you got now when it is coming to reality like we understood like I'm just connecting to whiteboard I hope you can see. So I'm sharing my whiteboard here. Second, I'm connecting. It's been loading, so So right now we have created a VNet, for example, like you created a 10.0.0.16, then you understood 60,000 plus IP address mean right now it's been assigned. Now, if you're creating any VM, for example, like I'm creating a VM, like for example, like I created VM1. So we understood yesterday, like when you are creating VM, it's mandatory that we need to attach one VNet to that computer. So the moment you select it, it's been like this VM is been part of X or Y VNet. From that pool, one IP address has been assigned to that computer. It's been by default, there is one IP address has been, internal IP address has been, by default it's been assigned. So yesterday we have seen like, this computer got 10.0.0.4. So 123, where it is using, that's already had a discussion. So right now you need to understand, uh, it's when you are creating a VM, it's mandatory that we need to assign a, or we need to map with a one virtual network. So virtual network can be a regional specific. So the VM and the virtual network has to be on the same location. So this is the thumb rule for that. Now, right now, 65,000 plus computers has been uh, it's been available here. Now, if I'm creating another VM, the same procedure will happen. It'll be connecting to the VNet, and IP address will be assigned. So this will be getting 10.0.0.5. So like this way, all the VMs in the infrastructure is been getting an IP address from here. So typically, uh, there is no kind of a boundary or there is no kind of a war or uh, there is no kind of a restriction is being right now it's been available so you have a situation or you have a uh, some scenario it's been available in front of you for example like in an organization uh, this vm is been configured or it's been using for the hr department or the employee pay slip or high sensitive information is been saving this one Right now, all these VMs, like a VM1 or a VM2 or HR, all are connected on the same network. So we need to configure some kind of a isolation or some kind of a boundary for your VM. So that generally we are doing with the help of a concept called subnet. So we'll be configuring a concept called subnet. So within a inside a, inside a 
uh, vnet itself you will create a boundary so this is something like uh, you you have purchased a villa for example like in your home you purchase a land so there is a one project is going on so so this is the boundary for the land so there is one builder for example like xyz builder is making a project so they are giving villa or they are giving a house plot or a flat to uh, everyone so one option is like there is a external boundary or external wall it's been built by this builder now um, sumit is got a house here now he's thinking like oh external wall is already here but i need an additional layer of security for me so he for this is house so he is putting another one internal wall also saying that it's called subnet so everyone can have their own subnet it's based on the how how depth you want your network security being placed in your organization same way you can able to configure subnet so this vm it will be in another subnet i'm just giving another same idea you give let's go back to the slide you may be able to connect this one one with your real time example right now if you're seeing here i have a virtual machine has been configured it's been the virtual machine has been configured here and i have a database also has been configured and our user also has been connected now the moment or you think a scenario it's like your virtual machine and database this database has been uh, saving or it's been handling all the user confidential information which include the employees that salary or a pay slip or personal information everything has been available on this database now i have a user who has been connected to my virtual machines using a private ip address the same ip address which you you got from the vnet using that the user is been connected now right now there is no boundary or there is no kind of a rule or this kind of a traffic management happening from virtual machine to database so the moment the user is been connected to virtual machine uh, if he is an hacker or if he's got some kind of uh, some way he is getting some kind of access from this computer to this database also so this is actually a, it's you are doing a kind of a network security compromises for your organization because uh, the user virtual machine and uh, the critical database uh, all the informations are using on the same uh, pool of ip address so the same uh, from the same vnet only it's been working and there is no isolation it has been right now it's been placed so for avoiding this one this kind of a situation you can configure the confidential information or a confidential vms or there's a if any resource which you information uh, this can be put in a some configuration called additional subnet i jamal is trying to ask him questions i'm just posing here if you have any questions you can able to or surya gaur you can mute him Okay, so. if you configuring a subnet like this the user will be getting an access only to the virtual machine virtual machine to database access can be restricted from the subnet level you can define the user is not able to access directly from the external or internet to database only this virtual machine is been allowed to access this one so this kind of a permissions this kind of a rule can be configured in the subnet level so this for this one you can able to enable the subnet options so subnet is been creating like in in case if you need uh, if you want to isolate your network on a, some particular uh, situations then you can go for configuring a subnet for your organization so basically you have a 
uh, situation like we want to restrict some access to some subnet or you need to uh, virtual machines or app service then you can go for this one now this is some self study for topic for you uh, it's been like yesterday we had a discussion on ip version 4 and ip version 6 so few people are having a confusion what is this ip version 4 and what is ip version 6 so uh, so i request you to do some spend some time on on this topic like understand ip class ip version 4 or a subnet or how generally it's been uh, it's been given uh, you won't get any questions for this one is it 700 exa but for working on a cloud network side or a cloud uh, AZ700 or it's been like a day-to-day -day network operation. Uh, these informations are mandatory because you should know what is private IP address, how private IP address is working or what is a public IP address and what is the meaning of giving a slash 8 or a 16 or what is the use of that prefix. So these informations are mandatory. So I request you to spend some time on understanding this concept because these are the foundation one. So spend some time on understanding this uh, topic. So this is another lab we need to complete today. Um, this already we are completed so in case if any new member is being joined here. So the next lab for you has been lab five, wasting on the chat. So lab five is like create a, create two virtual network. This is a lab one, two virtual network. One with the 10.0.0.0.16 .0 .0 .0 and another one is so this is a two lab you can uh, complete so lab four and lab this is a lab six not five lab six you can complete ensure that your ip address has been assigned now lab six is been like create a vm create a vm and assign to assign to the created vnet assign to unmap to to be in it okay. so there's a lab seven and lab eight it's been like install ias on vm okay there's a lab eight so install ias on the vm now in case if you are created a subnet let's see how this can be a rename now renaming a subnet is not is an easy one so basically it's been like when you are creating any vnet you will be getting an option though so if you are going back to the virtual machine here so when creating ip address for example like i'm just creating this is the uh, resource group right now there is no resource group here i'm just selecting az700 i given this is for hr network each TUS has been configured. Now, if you want to create any, um, rename a subnet, you can just double click here. So you can able to click it here. So you'll be getting option here. So again, they like, it's a default HR network. Default HR network. Now, if you want to create any additional configuration, like a NAT thing and service endpoint that we're discussing in the uh, next sessions, so if you want to configure any additional option that can be configured here now if you want to add any additional subnet for example like i'm saying like it's been hr um, hr uh, trainees it's a training network or a guest hr guest i'm the same hr guest so if you want to set any kind of additional one you can able to configure it here in the 16 so I'm saying this is the another subnet configure like 120 tables. I'm given HR guest need to use this IP address. So if you want to configure uh, any additional network like this, you can able to configure subnet here. So review and create. Now once you are created here, I'm just creating a virtual network here. It's been validated and it's been created now. So let's wait.
So it's been the deployment, it's been progress. So, so deployment, it's been completed. So we can just go to virtual network. Let me just refresh. You can able to see the HR network is been created here. Now, if you want to get a subnet PK, you can go to inside the HR network. In the bottom, you'll be getting an option called settings. You can go to settings. And here you will be able to see the subnet which you are created and you can able to see available IP address how many IP address currently it's been assigned and uh, what is the available IP address it's been available so in case if you want to do any kind of a modifications like if you want to configure some route table or some additional configuration or in case of any kind of a modification on the HR uh, on the subnet range uh, that you'll be able to do it from here and you have option for you have option for deleting also in case if you want to delete or if you want to do any additional subnet if you want to configure you have option for configuring also you have option is here for and in the if you're going to address spaces you will be able to see what is the address space right now it's been assigned and what is the additional space if you want to configure is there any uh, paid connection has been placed so this kind of information you will be able to get it from here. so this is the place where generally the uh, renaming or it's been like the subnet is been generally it's been configured. So typically, uh, if you want to, in, at any point of time, if you want to do any kind of a modification, you can go to the particular virtual network and the virtual network properties, you will be able to do uh, this kind of a modifications. Now, you need to uh, do this lab. It's been like a create a resource to a virtual network. So that's already given a lab question. So lab seven, you can able to do that. creating a VM uh, and mapping this one to a virtual network. And uh, there's a one important point always you need to remember. So whenever you're creating a virtual machine, uh, it's meant sure that your virtual machine and virtual network should be on the same resource group. You cannot have a virtual machine in one resource group and virtual network in another resource group and both are in a different region. Uh, that's practically not possible. So you need to ensure that. So whenever you are configuring uh, any virtual network ensure that the virtual machine and virtual network is on the same resource group so that's a mandate theory that's the thumb rule generally we are facing on the virtual network so it should be on the same region and ensure that it's available on the same resource group now before moving to this routing concept uh, let me take you into another concept called vnet it's been like uh, we'll be able to configure a uh, concept called vnet it's been like a vnet concept let me um, vnet and network security group this is a two topic i will cover first then i will be moving to take you into a, another uh, options so the first topic we are considering for today it's being called network security group it's called nsg is the topic right now we are discussing a topic called NSG so NSG is um, it's been a kind of a internal firewall um, so we we had a discussion a few minutes before it's been like I'm just giving a scenario Right now, you have configured a VNet. This is the VNet it's been configured. So this is a kind of a boundary. You configure 10.0.0.16. It's been like a 10.0.16 is the VNet you configure. Instead that, you configured a VM. And you have configured another VM. You configured another VM. So I'm considering a multiple scenarios here. You created a VM here. 
and in say that you created only one subnet uh, that's a default subnet only it's been created so something like sumit uh, we purchase a land in say that you have multiple flat or villa or home is been available there is no internal boundary available so by default we considered a couple of point yesterday now by default if any user it's been connecting from external to internal by default all inbound rules are law i hope this point has been clear to everyone by default if any user is been connected from external to internal it can be through rdp or it can be through http or it can be through https or any other application protocol uh, if you are using and if you are trying to connect internally by default the inbound rules is been blocked but at the same time this is allowing you to connect to external because outbound connections are by default allowed i want connection sir allowed so so outbound connections sir by default it's been allowed now second option this is the one scenario or the one case study we have considered the second case it's been like in the normal situations you will have a firewall in place like if you are taking a or normally the organization will have firewall also now we understood like when you are creating a vm you have now an ic card is been by default it's been created for all the vms and the ip address is assigned so by default all the vm which is been created inside your vnet so this is the vnet is been right now it's been configured so this is the vnet is been right now it's been configured so by default all the vm which is been configured inside your vnet can communicate each other it can communicate this computer this can communicate to this computer or this can be able to communicate this kind of computer by default it can have a inbound or outbound within a vnet there's a point you need to remember this is been possible within a vnet so the all the vm can communicate each other so for example like this is been configured with the direct system active directory this is been configured with hr database this is been configured a gaming computer this is been using for a browsing computer so what so can all the vm can communicate each other so we have a two scenario Ex external to internal by default all application ports are blocked but at the same time in, in within an internal connection all the vms are able to communicate each other so these are two scenario i have considered here i'm just posing here for a or taking a question right now uh, hope you are comfortable with this if you have any question i request you to paste it on the chat window so if you have any question please post it on this uh, so michael is asking like how to access a lab uh, we need to use the free account uh, so we already uh, shared a procedure for how to create a free account michael you need to use uh, the free account or the, your uh, personal account or the lab for accessing this one So any question from anyone? So waiting like if you're good, I request you to confirm through the chat window. Okay. 
which good okay now let's see how to create a nsg right now okay so we sumit is saying like it's good okay thank you and now right now the internal communication there is no restriction at all now but there are some situation uh, the organization is thinking like we need to do some kind of a restriction for your organization so it can be on a inbound rule or it can be on a outbound rule uh, you want to make some kind of a restrictions so that generally we are doing with the help of a two options one it's been like a fire one second one it's been like a with the help of nsg so firewall is a uh, this is a cost product because they need to pay for that nsg is a free product so you don't need to pay anything for that it's been a free product now how nsg has been working uh, nsg will be acting as a internal firewall so it's been acting as an internal firewall you don't need to pay anything for this so this nsg will define with a set of user defined rules we will decide or we will define a rules something called inbound rules inbound rule means that as a user or as a cloud administrator you are defining inbound rule incoming rules in that for this computer or for this network or for this subnet i am allowing only port number xyz or i am allowing the application protocol http or rdp or smdp or a pop3 you are defining this one same time you have a flexibility to define outbound rules also so the both rules can be defined and you the both rules can be configured also so so this generally inbound rule or outbound rule we are defined now this inbound rule or outbound rule in which situation you are defining one it's like a from any connection which is been coming from external to internal or in within a internal also now i need to put some kind of a policy here saying that i don't want all the vm to communicate each other i am made a boundary here saying that this is an active directory server i don't want all the com computer to connect each other i need to define some set of a policy saying that to this computer i'm just i need to i need to i need to uh, configure some kind of a policy here saying that i don't want all the computer to be connected each other so i, I i'm defining a some point of a policy here saying that only from this computer only the access to be allowed this is a computer used by the active directory admin only this computer is allowed to access my domain controller or another scenario we have seen when you are creating a vm you define only the port number rdp 3389 is been allowed here 
that the reason yesterday we were able to connect to that this one we were able to take an rdp of your vm because that rule at the time of a vm creation you defined a inbound rule like this right were you configured this one this is been configured in the nsg level so nsg is something like a, it's a firewall kind of thing how this is been assigned this can be assigned in a vnic level or this can be assigned in a subnet level not in the network level okay this has been generally assigned in a nic vnic level or this has been configured in a subnet level we'll see how this can be configured i'll show you that So this is the point you need to remember. So I'm just giving a scenario here. If you can just go back to the presentation. So right now you can able to see here. So we have a couple of VM is been configured. So you can see here there's a couple of public public balancing load service has been connected, and you have some backend subnet also. You have some critical database server has been configured. Now let's take a So just take a scenario. It's like if I'm not making an isolation like this. Right now, if you can see here, all the web servers which has been connected to public facing or internet, I have ensured this has been available in the front end subnet, and you have a back end subnet also because I need to ensure that database servers or Active Directory or a critical server, or uh, it's been uh, configured on the back end. So you can able to see both. Options which will have both which been configured in a different one. Then in the subnet level, I have configured a rule saying that NSG has been configured. There is a firewall has been configured here, and in the public level also there is a firewall has been configured. Now in individual level also, in individual PC level also, NSG NSG level I'll be configuring. So technically, how this has been working? Now if I'm a user. If I need to access the Active Directory, first the packet will come to the firewall, normal firewall, and it will check if this packet or the application has been allowed. So if it is allowed, it will come in say, and it will be connected to the VNet. Now in the VNet level, in the subnet level, it will check hey, whether this packet has been RDP is allowed. So NSG having a set of rules. If this is allowed, it will allow into a next set. If it is not allowed, it will tell sorry, boss, this is been not allowed. Now it will come here. It will verify this NSG, and it will connect to this VM. This VM also will have a firewall has been configured. If it is allowed, then only this VM is been allowed to access. Otherwise, it says, "Sorry, boss, this is not allowed. There is some blocking is happening." So technically, you need to ensure that you have this something like. For example, like just think like this is your office. Now this is your ODC. This is your cabin. Okay, you're sitting here. This is your cabin. Okay. Now we have uh, Mark is coming and meeting. This is Sumit. Sumit is sitting here. Okay. So. So it is entered. Uh, it's been the, this office, okay? This is your office. You want to meet Mr. Sumit? Now uh, this is your office boundary. This is office boundary. 
this is the office bond. Now Sumit is sitting inside this. There's a cabin. It's been a cabin for Sumit. Now Mark has been coming. So Mark has been coming from here and you want to meet this one. First it will be entered into this IT park. Now IT park is having a external firewall. This is one building. Okay, there's a building inside the building. This company has been working. What happened to us? Oh, by mistake I closed. Sorry, sorry. Something like that. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. I think suddenly whiteboard is got crashed. Just give me a second. So wait a second, it's been whiteboard is been yeah. So This is uh, building boundary. Okay. Now uh, Sumiti is coming here. So first, there will be a security person available in the external firewall. You will ask Mark, show me your badge or ID card. So you'll be verifying this one. Now, once it is entered here, in your office also, for example, like Sumiti is working for X company. So here also you can able to see there is a security person is available. The security person also will ask, hey, show me your ID card. Now, once he's entered, in front of this cabin also, we have a security here. He's asking the detail. If in case, if he's failed to show this ID card or badge, he will tell, sorry boss, you cannot go and insert. And here also you can able to see if the security person also allowed. And if he's been saying, okay, then he can connect, he can meet Sumit. Now just connect this one to your virtual network. So this Sumit is a VM. Now on the VM level, you are assigning a security person that's called NSG. Now in the office level, office your company that's called in the subnet level. This is called as a subnet. So in a subnet level, you are assigning a another NSG. Now in the organization level, that's mean external boundary, you will have a firewall also. So if any packet is coming. Uh, in between our virtual network will be that so virtual network we are not say not uh, virtual network will be mapped with the firewall but nsg is generally assigning with your subnet level or this has been configuring in a vnet or the vnet level so this is the point you need to remember it's kind of an internal firewall now how this has been working because this security person is defined with a set of rules by the management saying that you are supposed to do X or Y, Z activity. There is a scope of work is being defined. Similar way, in Azure side also, how energy is working, this has been based on how you are defining your inbound rule or how you are defining your outbound. By default, if you are taking any VM, for example, like if you are taking Now, if you go to all resources, by default, there won't be any network security group has been created automatically. So if you can just go here, so if you can network security group. Right now, there is no network security group has been created here. See here, there is no network security group has been created. Now, if you want to create a new, you can create it here. There's one option or along with the virtual machine so i was saying network security group is been mapped to vnic level or this can be configured in the subnet level also so by default when you are creating a vm any vm by default there will be a network security group will be created right now you can see here uh, if you want to check a network security group search bar you can go and you can type a command network security group it will displaying it right now there is no network security group is being created now let's try to create a virtual machine let's create a sample virtual machine i'm just creating a virtual machine i'm just creating on the same resource group az700 for example like let's say it is a server one these two years the same location i've created 
uh, operating system let's take it as a data center one and username let's say it's been a training admin password is being given and network group you can able to see uh, network security group has been connected to basic one if you want to go to advanced you can able to define to which network security group this network can be part right now we we don't have any network security group currently available that the reason you are getting an option like new there is one option you are getting new in case if they have already have any network security group it's been available on the network you 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 can able to see that network security group details from here or you have an option for deleting the public IP address and other details so right now I'm saying like a basic one I just told review and create I just given to review and just given create So you can able to see the deployment it's in progress. So you can able to see the deployment is in progress now. So it's been now. Uh, creating so we need to wait a few minutes so deployment is in progress so we need to wait a couple of minutes So deployment it's been completed now if you're going to virtual machine tab you will be able to see uh, there is a virtual machine it's been created uh, with the name server one now if you click in this old resource group or you may be noticed like at the time of the creation of a virtual machine we given a option here saying that select the inbound role here right if you may be notice here so we define for this virtual machine port number rdp is been allowed here so this information you are giving in the nsg level for example like if you're going back to your virtual machine or old resource view if you're clicking old resource here you may be noticed along with your virtual machine there is a network security group is created automatically we haven't created right so we given only the information about server one so you need to understand whenever you are creating any virtual machine by default there is a network security group is been automatically created and this network security group is been mapped to the VNIC level this server one this is a virtual network security group where this has been mapped this has been mapped to virtual network interface of your vm1 now if you go to the vm1 this is your vm1 now if you go to this virtual network interface card property see this is the network interface card and in this network interface card there is a two nsg has been attached see here this is the network interface card number you can see server 1262 
underscore Z1. This is the NIC number. This network security group server1.nsg is been attached to a this is been attached to this NIC. I hope it's been clear to you. I repeat, we understood network security group is a firewall, internal firewall is been with the help of that because with the help of that, you are able to define inboard rules and outbound rules. How this has been created? This can be created in two ways. One is like along with the VM, automatically this will be created. That we have seen from the older source group. Second one, if you want, you can go for creating it separate also. So you will be able to go directly network security group and later on you will be able to attach it. Now when you created a VM, automatically the network security group is being created and this has been map or a link to network interface card or the VNIC card of the particular VM. Right now, if you can see here, if you're taking the server one, right now, if you go to the virtual machine, server one is the VM we have created. And for this VM in the networking, there is a network interface card is been attached. For this network interface card, the network security group is been attached. I hope it's been clear now. Any question? If you're good, you can just mark it on good in the chat window. So at least I will be able to understand we all on, on the same page. I request everyone to confirm through the chat window. So it's easy for me also to uh, plan the sessions or I'll be able to drive the sessions accordingly. So I'll request you to update it on the chat window. Good. Thank you, Sumit. So we'll do one thing. Uh, let's take a five minutes break and we'll be back. So let's take a five minutes break now and we'll discuss about how to configure NSG.
I hope you're back. So if you're back, request me to confirm through the chat option. Okay, so right now we have seen uh, how NSG has been automatically been creating. You have seen like it's been like when you are creating a VM. Automatically, this NSV is been created and it's been attaching with the network interface card. Now, this is the first option you are seeing. Now, let me go for the second option. Now, right now, the configurations or the tasks or the activity we are done along with the VM. Now there are some situation you're thinking like you need to create a separate network security group <coughs> not along with the uh, VM creation. Now additional to that it's been like right now you can able to see uh, in the network security group there is a NSG has been created and you can see if you're seeing this name you'll be able to identify this has been created in East US and uh, if you want to get a more insights here if you are clicking here you will be able to understand this has been bounded to resource group and uh, there is a one inbound rule has been configured uh, technically if you are seeing here there is a three default inbound rule has been created by Azure and there is a three outbound rule has been created by Microsoft but only one rule has been user defined that the reason it's showing here one inbound rule because this is one inbound rule you are defined saying that to server one RDP property has been allowed and that the reason it's been showing that and it's been you are getting option for it's been associated with one network interface card you can able to see it's been there one network interface card it's been associated so you can able to see here where this has been associated now if the same network interface card if you want to associate with uh, another network interface card it's been possible because it's already been associated that the reason this network interface group you are not able to associate because this can be associated it's been configured in the NAC level that the reason you are not able to assign to another NAC card and if you want the same subnet if you want to associate you can able to associate with a subnet also if you want to associate with another subnet uh, you will be able to associate let me see how this has been doing let me create a symbol or uh, virtual a network security group here right now already we have a, a network security group created along the VM uh, now additional to that let's create one more network security group for example like I'm creating another resource group like subscription training I given it's a resource group is it similar I given it like a second energy group some second energy now right now I'm not Selecting East to US, for example, like I'm trying to select Central India. I'm giving it's in Central India. So I'm just giving create and wait. So it's been validated. This region I'm not selected uh, uh, East to US, I selected another region.
okay you can able to see there is a one network security group is being created okay can able to see in this group to network security group you can able to see central india has been created and have east to west also now let me create one more network security group here uh, for example like is in it's been creating the east us itself okay create this so this is a third nst is to us just to be very clear so it's been created which so can create so you can able to see the deployment has been completed so we can just go to network security group right now you will be able to see there is a three energy has been created two has been created uh, in uh, east us and one has been created in the central india now let's go and create a vm just going in creating a vm here now here you can able to see when you select in network security group there is an option it's been like basic like it's we are selecting in network right now i'm selecting the source group it's been like az700 and uh, in the networking tab if i'm selecting hr network if you go to advanced you are getting a two options here see here there is a server one energy is been placed do you want to attach to that see here you're getting that option here because there is a server one nsd already been placed so if you want you can able to attach to that now where this is been creating this is been creating east to us so east to us already we have a nsd in place so it's asking like do you want to connect to that what is the reason where you are not getting the third one because this is been created in the east to us that the reason the third one is not able to select it here for example like i'm saying like uh, nsd right now i'm saying like none and select none and i selected hr network uh, is two years is given just give the virtual machine name is like a, a second vm we'll see how to map this one the nsg right now is not assigned to this vm or uh, not in the nsg level not in the subnet level also and but at the same time we have created three nsg queue so right now we are creating the second vm and we are trying to attach a nsg row
So it's been the deployment is in progress. We need to wait a minute. Deployment is in progress. So it's been deployment is completed. So we can just go to the virtual machine now. So go to the second VM. Now if you go to networking option, right now it's been trying to check the rules details and we got an information saying that there is no NSG rule has been by default has been configured here. What is the reason behind this? The reason is like when you create a VM, we told right now I don't need any NSG rule. Now you compare with the other VM. Let's go to the first VM. Now let's go to the portal dot dot com. Uh, let's just connect into the first VM through in a different tab. So let, let's wait. Now, if you go to the virtual machine or the first VM, if you may be observing this, in the networking, you can able to see there is a NSG CLC. In the server one, you can able to see there is an inbound rule and outbound rule has been listing. But in the second VM, we are not getting this detail. The reason is that right? internal firewall is not assigned in a NAZ level. See here, for the second VM, there is no rule because network interface card 430Z1 has been created, but there is no NSG rule has been configured yet. By default, it's been configured, but at the time of a creation, we told I don't need any NSG rule. Now, how will I add this one? In case if you want to add network security glue into a VM or into a subnet level, you can go back to the network security glue can just go to the network security group for example like you want to assign uh, right now we have created two NSG here there is a second VM one is in Central India and one is in East US let's go to Central India one now if you want to associate this rule if you want to associate in a sub in an interface level if you want you can attach in a interface level or you can attach in a subnet level also. There is an option you will get either network interface level or in a subnet level. So in case if you want to map or if you want to link your network security group in a network or it's in a subnet, that is even possible here. So in a network interface level, if you're going here, associate. And right now, you are getting an option like a no available items. What is the reason behind this one? The reason is very simple. The reason is, uh, let me open the VM in another tab. Two tab in this opening, so it's be easy to understand. Now, if you're seeing here, right now, I, if I'm trying to map second NSG group, into the VM which has been created here. For example, like the VM which you are created like a server second VM. I'm trying to configure a NSG group to this one. But right now I'm not getting the option. The reason is this second VM has been created east to US location. The data center I've selected is a east to US. But the network security group, third VM has been created Sorry, the second 
second NST rule which were created is in a central India. So we both are in a different location. That's the reason we are not able to associate this one. That's the reason in the morning I was saying your network security group and the resource group and virtual network group has to be on the same location. That's the reason because this has been created in these two years. But the security group has been created in Central India. Now, if you go to third NSG, which is configured in these two years, if you are going here and attach network interface card, you are able to see available network interface card in that particular network. Right now, you can see there is a network interface card available in the virtual network, which has been located in these two years, and the network interface card name is 430Z1. Who is using 430? This 430 has been used by the second VM. It's created, you see, 430Z1. The same name is been listing here, right? So if I'm ass assigning here, I can attach here. So give OK. Now I can be able to attach. Now wait, right now the NSG or the firewall loop is attached in the interface level. So right now we can able to see this has been mapping. So it's, you can able to see the second VM has been associated here. Now just go back to this VM and do a refreshment of this one. Just do a refresh. Now go back to the networking one. Now if you may be noticing here, you can able to see this rule has been by default it's been created. Right now the RDP is not showing. The reason it's like there is no inbound. RDP rule it's been placed here that the reason the RDP rule be currently it's been not showing now if you want to attach this NSG into a subnet level uh, the same location you will be able to assign like you can able to go to the virtual network you can able to define the virtual network right now you can able to see uh, right now the third NSG is been created in the where it has been created this has been created in Third NSG is created east to west. So you are able to see all the virtual network which has been configured in the east to west. Now, if you go back to oh, second NSG and if you're assigning in the subnet level, here also you will say there is no network is available. The reason is we don't have any virtual network which has been configured in the central India. So that's the reason uh, you are not able to assign this associate this subnet in the subnet level because the virtual network or the NSG right now it's been configured it's in a central India and central India we don't have any virtual network is been placed right because whatever virtual network we are created right now this has been created in the east two years so end of the session you need to understand your NSG and virtual network and resource group and resource has to be on the same location otherwise you will not be able to associate with this one so there's a point you need to remember. Now, right now your NSG has been assigned to VM or it's been configured in the subnet level. By default, if you're observing or if you're noting here, by default, NSG rule has been configured. By default, there's a three rule you can able to see here. Right now, if you can see here, there is a by default, there is a, a by default, there is a, by default, you can able to see there is a three inbound rule and there you can able to see three outbound rule also so uh, you will be able to see there is a three inbound rule and you can able to see three outbound rule also one second
so inbound rule and outbound rule you can able to see now in case right now we are seeing here this second vm right now the rdp connection is been not allowed the reason is uh, we haven't configured any uh, rdp rule at the time of a vm creation now we need to ensure that there is a vm um, right now it's been configured for example like let's go back to our whiteboard Right now we have created a VM, it's called a server one. It's called server one. Right now we assigned a NSG rule here. In NSG rule, we haven't mentioned any information about RDP here. RDP informations are not available. Now, if a user is been trying to connect using a RDP protocol, saying that this is my public IP address and just giving IP address, packet will come here. So it will validate the NSG rule because in the NSG rule, only three inbound rule and outbound rule, three only available. So it will tell, it will validate the inbound rule rule is been always starting from 0 to 4096 there is a priority code is been available so first it will validate priority number one so it's 100 100 is always having a highest priority and the highest number is having a lowest priority now it will tell rdp rule is been not available here for example like if you can just go back to the vm now go to the vm one what is the public IP address here? It's called 20.52.55.172. So I'm just typing MSTSC. And if I'm typing here, I'm just giving a connect. It will connect. It will not connect. Okay. So I'm just giving connect. It's been initiating a connection. So you can see here, it's been initiating a remote connection. Now, connection is maybe reaching to second VM, but since there is no inbound rule, it's been configured here, you will be getting a message. We got a message saying that, sorry boss, there is no RDP, it's not, there is no rule has been available. What is the reason? Because there is no rule you have defined here saying that RDP to be allowed to second VM. Now let's go back to the second VM, the first VM, server one. Server one, if you're checking the rule, NSG rule, you defined RDP is allowed here. See here. Now, if I'm connecting this IP address, this is what is IP address? It's an IP address of a server one. Now, if I'm going here, I'm just giving to RDP one. So I'm just giving this is the IP address here, 158 I given. I given connect. Now I given connect and then just give me a second. Okay. Just trying to connect. Just give me a second. We got a login screen. See right now. Not able to move. What happened? See right now we are able to take a remote session because RDP rule is here, it's here. Because in the NSG rule, we define RDP is allowed here. So that's the reason we are able to connect this from an external network. See here, right now, I'm able to connect it here because NSG rule has been allowing here. Now, let's do this for the next second one. Let's try to create this inbound rule for this virtual machine. Let's go to the second VM and assign an inbound rule. Let's see how assignment can be done just go to add inbound rule so whenever you're configuring any inbound rule you need to define from where you are connecting so this can be from any computer or it can be from any ip address or it can be service tag like internet um, you will be able to define your source right now i'm saying like from any and what is the source port details if you know the source port details like a 3389 or it's been uh, uh, what is the port number if you know you can be able to select it here and what is the destination? If you know the destination, if you want to 
uh, do a scrutinization of your uh, uh, packet flow if you know the ip address of a service tag or the application group or the vm detail uh, you can give that details right now uh, i'm giving to any or in case if you know the ip address of the destination computer you can give that ip address saying that is the vm name is 10.0.0. whatever ip address that destination computer that details you can give right now we are doing a lab so i'm not going to that level i'm giving here i need rdp connection so you have rdp i'm saying like rdp connection so it's being given this now if you want to have a website or it's we have a uh, web server if you are configured in that kind of a situation you can enable is hd or http yes. so you can able to allow or define so if you want to uh, deny as always have a highest priority so you can define the action what is the action uh, what is the uh, rule to be followed and the priority number is all been starting from 100 and it's been ending in 1096 so if you have a uh, priority code if you want to set any kind of a priority code you can able to set so priority code has been always starting from 100 and uh, then uh, 1001 like this it will be going finally it's been 4096 so if any NSG rule validation is happening it will start from 100 and it will check is there any matching rule is available or not so you'll have only two condition LO or a DNA only the two condition now on the first rule for example like you said RDP is allowed and the second rule you said RDP is denied DNA RDP so what action it will take it will go ahead with the first rule the reason it's like 100 is having highest priority if there is any rule it's been matched it won't take it won't go and check the rest of the rules so whether the rule has been matched in the 100 or 1 not what is the first rule has been applied it will take that only so it won't worry about what has been configured on 101 or 102 or a 3 it won't discuss or it won't check anything because the first rule itself it's been completed the validation so you don't want to go to the 101 or 102 it's not required because this 100 is having highest value so right now i'm saying is the priority is 100 and i can define i can give for your identification like a rdp connection so you can give some like rdp to rdp to vm some details if you want you can able to give the details. just give add now if you're checking this the rule has been in the back end it's been started so inbound rule you can able to see all the virtual network can communicate each other within a network you can able to see so inbound connection has been allowed within a network and assure load balance to virtual network calls it's been communication has been allowed but if there is any other connection other than these two if there is any other connection whether it's been coming from a vnet or from another vnet or whether from the external network all that connection will be denied by default so by default all incoming connection to the vnet is been by default it's been blocked now when it is coming to outbound route outbound rule is you can see it's been allow all outbound connections you can see virtual network to virtual network connection has been by default it's been allowed and by default virtual network to internet is allowed but it won't allow any other communication so it's allowed two condition by default for the outbound route one it's like within a virtual network you will be able to communicate second rule it's been second rule it's been like uh, it's been configured saying that other than this two all other connection has been by default it's been blocked only to internet and it's been to the within a virtual network the communication has been allowed right now we configured an inbound rule so when you are configuring inbound rule it's mandatory that you need to give a priority code so you can able to see there is a priority code is always we need to provide second thing you need to provide a port number and you need to provide source and destination and it is mandatory that you need to provide a condition also whether it's been allowed or whether it's been denied that condition also to be allowed right now you can able to see there is an inbound rule is been configured now let's go back to this uh, vm and uh, connect using a public ip address i'm giving ip address been given here i'm just giving type
So let's connect it. Give me a second. So it's been able to connect right now. You can able to see here. Oh, this has been connected. The reason it's like uh, the inbound rule has been configured here. See here. Uh, what is the NAZ has been configured? You are able to connect with the help of that. See here. Uh, so right now, the second we we uh, NSG rule also has been configured. Because of that, you are able to connect to that. Any question from anyone? So I think we have good on the energy part. So let's go back to the slide. So we were discussing about uh, this scenario. So I hope right now it's been clear to you, like in which situation uh, you are using NSC. It's like typically like in case if you want to isolate your network or you want to or put some additional layer of a network security to a infrastructure, uh, then that kind of a situation you can go for config a NSG. So typically you'll have an external firewall in build place and generally you'll have external firewall in the external network and when it is coming to internet you'll have NSG. So this can be associated uh, in the subnet level or this can be associated in the VNet level. So it's based on like how you want to configure your network based on that you'll be able to configure this one. So basically if you want to go for any network security group so these are two rules you need to take care one is the inboard security rule and second one is been outboard security rule and these are the mandatory information you need to be configured you need to have a priority code so this priority code has been starting from 100 and it's been ending in one is 4096 this is the ending code you have and you need to define what is the port number or what is the ip address and whether it's a tcp or a udp or what is the source or a destination that information needs to be configured so these are the mandatory information you need so typically it's been coming uh it's been assigned in a subnet level or it's been assigned in a network interface this is a key point you need to remember and nsg is a separate resource it's not even though if it is installing along with your vm uh, this is a separate resource so multiple rules can be configured and all the rule has been processed based on the what is the priority code it's been configured basically you will have only two action is in place one is been uh, allow or the second one is been uh, it's in a dna one so typically it's been acting like internal firewall and there is no intelligent mechanism here all this uh, because if you are considering azure firewall uh, that can be connected with the microsoft threat management or that have you got uh, some kind of artificial intelligence based on the uh, common issues uh, that will be allowing you to do some mitigate actions but here you will not have any such kind of options available here this completely it's been working based on how manually you are defining an inbound rule or how manually how you are defining an outbound rule based on this uh, action is being taken here in the energy group level and this is the lab 9 for you also lab 9 is for you it's been like create a energy rule or this is the another lab you need to complete today to like create a energy and energy rule so this is the next lab question for you it's been lab 9 so create a virtual machine and try to install a virtual IAS or it's mean like a, a configure a, using a, a RDP connection. So these are two rules you can able to configure. Uh, yesterday we have seen like how to allow HTTP. So right now we allowed RDP similar way you can provide HTTP over the so there is an option available like HTTP you can give the port number HTTP and uh, port number 80 and you can allow the NSTP. So this is the way it's been working. 
and the priority is seen already we have seen low LO or a DNA options you will be able to see so that's about uh, uh, energy part now with this note uh, we are concluding the day three details that I given username and password I given just given a training admin password I'm just giving right now I'm just giving preview and create okay 